Hi guys, today I want to share some tips with you about how you can balance your medical care with a neural retraining practice that you're doing. I get this question a lot because many people out there have explored various neural retraining programs that um, teach them to ignore their symptoms and not put any weight in any physical potential causes of what's going on with their symptoms and things like that. I totally understand where they're going with that. However, I think there is a way that you can bring more balance between the two. I had to learn this myself because I was still healing using both neural retraining and medical medical approach when I first found neural retraining. So I had to do a bit of both together and figure out how to balance them. And I don't think that it requires gaslighting yourself or not going to see a doctor at all or anything like that. So let's talk about how I think you can do it and be very successful. Starting with, why is it important to balance the two? You know, both of them have the same end goal, right? Healing. But the medical approach is super different from a neural retraining approach. And a lot of what you might pursue medically may end up being very triggering, overwhelming, or stressful for you for a variety of reasons. That's why it's important to give this a little bit of attention and see how you can learn to teach your brain to feel safer in regards to your symptoms and your medical care while still working on those things if they're needed. So from a neural retraining perspective, since we're trying to teach the brain that you are actually safe in all the typical contexts of your life, right? Your life is not in danger when you go to the doctor, as an example, or when you have a symptom come up. That includes what you're doing with your healthcare, right? We want you to feel safe in your healthcare journey. And we can't have you stressing out about your medical care all day long because if that's happening, then you're likely in fight or flight or in freeze, which is not a healing state. So it's not uncommon for the medical approach to healing to want people to take so many different actions to improve their health that it gets really overwhelming, right? In fact, I often meet people whose entire life surrounds their dietary restrictions, supplements and medications they take, and their other health practices. And so you can imagine that if you also work or you have a caretaking responsibility of some kind or other things in life that you have to attend to, it can leave very little space for anything else. And these people I find often are not doing anything fun, are not having any joy in their life, any pleasure. They're not doing anything for relaxation or for connection. And I totally get that because at times during my health journey, that's what happened to me. But I now know that that was, you know, a pretty detrimental way to go about it. And it, it was not the most healing way to approach the situation. And the reason is that there's a problem is because we're not designed to work, work, work and have no play in our lives. For most people, medically managing their healthcare is not fun. The entire range of positive emotional states that we usually easily access when we're doing something we love, that whole range of positive emotional states is healing. It changes the biochemical cocktail, not only in your brain, but in your entire body in such a way that all of the functions that you need in order to heal, those are all working better. They're all optimized when you're feeling good emotionally. So yeah, all of those positive emotional states are associated with that healing nervous system state that is nicknamed safe and social or rest, digest, and heal. It's got a couple nicknames now. So when neural retraining, we also don't want to focus all of our attention on our symptoms. And that doesn't mean that you can't take note of them and go, oh yeah, my back is starting a little bit more today. That's going to happen naturally. But what often happens that's really detrimental is when we fixate on the symptoms or on our treatment approaches, whatever that is. Because ultimately, when we put all of our focus on these things, it reinforces to the brain that the symptom is not safe. And that will then 
start a reinforcing feedback loop of hypervigilance about it, which ultimately leads to more dysregulation of your nervous system over time. It's a terrible feedback loop to be in. So what can you do differently? Well, when symptoms are present or they're flaring, you can reinforce to your brain that you are actually safe. And I find that the best way to do this is to redirect your attention to something that legitimately makes you feel good and safe. And when you're feeling really anxious or stressed or threatened by what is going on in your body, you may need some help with that. And by help, I mean, it's okay to use props. You can use one of your favorite funny YouTube videos to achieve that. You can use your favorite song and dancing around the living room with your partner or your pet. It's okay if you can't do it all internally. There are some great ways to do it that way, but for many people, it's difficult for them to do when they're really, really dysregulated. So that's something that I suggest you start doing immediately if you are dealing with symptoms. If you do need to do some research into your health issues, limit the amount of time you spend doing that. Again, we don't wanna focus all of our attention on the health issue, reinforcing to the brain how unsafe it is. I would recommend that you limit that to 30 minutes to an hour a day and focus more on researching the actions that you can take to heal and less so on the doom and gloom of whatever the symptom or condition is, right? There's a lot of that out there. And obviously if you're reading all day long about how bloating can be associated with certain types of cancers, you're going to be getting yourself very worked up, right? You're going to be, again, reinforcing to the brain how dangerous the symptom is when it might just be that you ate beans earlier and your gut bacteria are producing a lot of gas because of how they're digesting that. So <clears throat> we don't want to catastrophize internally, but we also don't want to take in a lot of information that is catastrophic in nature. When you are done researching whatever it is that you wanted to research about your health, you want to check in with the state of your nervous system. You may not ever do this, but it's important to do. So you want to go, oh, okay, so how am I feeling right now? Am I feeling more anxious as a result of having done that? Am I feeling depressed? Am I feeling like I just want to crawl into a hole and never come out? <laughs> Am I feeling angry? Whatever it is, it's coming up for you emotionally. If that's there, you need to attend to that before you move on with your life. Because if you don't, it's going to carry over into the things that you want to do in your life for joy and for pleasure and for fun. It's going to carry over into your relationships and your interactions and all those things to your work. So you want to use a neural retraining process to help yourself move through that dysregulated state that you may have created by doing all this research. It's very common that people get very dysregulated when they research their own health issues. The other thing you want to be careful about is spending time on forums where everyone is just talking about how horrible they feel, how, the, how long they've been sick, how they've tried everything and nothing is working, right? Because actually, these stories can be really powerful, right? Especially when it's somebody dealing with the same experience you're dealing with. And let's say they're like, <clears throat> I have MS and, you know, they've had it for 20 years and they're way further along down the path. And they're basically showing you what all the bad things that could happen on that journey with MS. That is not going to help you right now. That is absolutely going to be detrimental to your healing to take in a lot of that information or really any of it. Ultimately, for anything you're dealing with, what you want to focus on is the stories where people healed, is the stories where, pe where people put the condition into remission, is the stories where they came out the other side or they lived a great life even with the condition. Those kinds of stories are the ones that you want to focus on. And in my experience, that's not what you get a lot of in forums. So be careful about that because again, it reinforces to the brain how dangerous the condition or the symptom is, and that's going to lead to more dysregulation of your nervous system and less time spent in the healing state. So if you get stressed whenever you go see a healthcare provider, <clears throat> you probably do want to work on rewiring that. It may be that you need to rewire some trauma from 
your experiences with past practitioners that you've worked with. And that may be the limiting factor to getting you back to a place where you can relax in a healthcare setting again. It may be that you have some negative belief systems about healthcare settings or providers that is triggering an excessive survival response to the idea of working with a practitioner. Maybe you believe because of past experiences or somebody else's experience in your life that healthcare providers are incompetent or they don't care or <laughs> all the tools that they use are harmful. All of these kinds of things, of course, are going to get you very anxious or something like that when you think about going to a healthcare provider. And that's, that's not going to help you if you need to go to a healthcare provider, right? Or maybe you just feel embarrassed or very vulnerable when you have to talk about what your health issues are with somebody else. All of those things can be rewired so that you can have a stress-free time going to the doctor. And we have a bunch of people doing this in Wired for Wellness right now. People who ordinarily would get very anxious and have actually the runs from going to see a healthcare practitioner every single time. And they've rewired that response so it's not happening anymore. All kinds of transformations like that. And so that is so worth doing if you're in the midst of a healthcare journey and you have to go see a healthcare practitioner regularly, right? Because that means you're going to be improving your regulation for big chunks of time in your life if you're going regularly. Okay, so the next thing that I wanted to mention, I think I'm going to save to the next video because this video is getting a little bit long. So thanks for tuning in and I will make a part two and send it out to you soon.